So right here, I'm going to do an introduction to amino acid biosynthesis. All right, so I want to pose a question. Do humans make all 20 amino acids? And by now, if you're in biochemistry, probably you know the answer is no. We don't make all 20. So you've probably heard of the term essential amino acids or non-essential amino acids. What those basically are is essential means it's essential to get through the diet. And that means we can't make those amino acids. So an amino acid such as phenylalanine, we can't actually make that from scratch, meaning we don't have the enzymes to build it up ourselves. We're actually going to have to intake it through the diet. In fact, anytime there's a nutrient, whether it's a vitamin or anything that's termed essential, it means we can't make it. We have to get it through the diet. If there's ever a nutrient, including an amino acid, that's termed non-essential, that means we can actually build it from scratch, which is termed de novo. We can build it de novo from everyday things floating around the cell. We can make it ourselves. Okay? And so in general, this is one of the lists that you can find. Now, the, depending on where you get the list, it can differ a little bit. Some people, in fact, don't consider tyrosine a non-essential amino acid. We can make tyrosine from phenylalanine, but we can't make phenylalanine. So I don't think it really makes sense to put tyrosine right there. I never did when I was even taking biochemistry to a long time ago. Um, I always felt that tyrosine should be essential, even though we have an enzyme that can, can make it from um, phenylalanine, but we can't make phenylalanine. So I usually consider tyrosine essential because we can't make it from scratch, because we can't make phenylalanine from scratch. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to put it there, to be perfectly honest. Okay. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense why I say that. Um, and so in general, um, we're going to say there's basically about 10 essential amino acids and 10 non-essentials. Now you notice there's, I think, I believe there's two extras shown here. Selenocysteine and taurine. Now these are other amino acids that are not found in proteins, but they're particularly important for uh, supporting healthy life. Um, selenocysteine is another amino acid that's actually made in a very uh, unique way. We're going to look at that in another video. It's essentially serine or cysteine, but instead of having an OH or an SH, that, uh, that chalcogen is replaced with a, uh, it's replaced with a selenium. Okay, so it's, it's, it looks almost the same except the sulfur and cysteine would be a selenium. Okay, so kind of cool and it's mostly used for redox processes. And the taurine is, has virtually an unknown function, although we do know uh, if you deplete cells of it, the cells uh, go into stress and they, um, the quality of life of that cell is not good. Um, taurine is not well understood, but we do know if you don't have it, uh, you've got a big problem. Okay? And we do, do the, we do know the biosynthesis of taurine. And then not listed here, there's a lot of other amino acids that we'll look at, including beta alanine, that's one of them. GABA is another one. We're going to look at some of the other ones and see their biosynthesis and function too. It's actually a pretty interesting topic. Now you'll see here things that have one star here. These are termed branch chain amino acids. Now a lot of times they don't really introduce the concept of branch chain amino acids until you start talking about biosynthesis because now we're sort of in anabolic mode. We're building things up and this is going to lead us ultimately into protein synthesis. Branch chain amino acids are really important because especially these three, isoleucine, valine, and especially out of those three, leucine, stimulate protein synthesis in muscles and all cells for that matter. But branch chain amino acids are amino acids that have hydrocarbon R groups that are branched. Okay, And if you actually look at the structures of isoleucine, leucine, and valine, you'll see they're branch chain uh, hydrocarbon R groups. And usually they'll abbreviate this BCAA. In fact, if you've been to a drugstore, you may have seen a supplement that says BCAAs. That means it has leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And the theory behind that that has actually been substantiated through research is that BCAAs actually stimulate uh, muscle protein synthesis, okay? which is very important in things like resistance training if you're trying to build muscle proteins. All right? If you see one here that has two stars, an example, arginine, cysteine, uh, tyrosine down here. These are amino acids that are called conditionally essential. And you'll see they're all listed under the non-essential 
uh, column, but they're conditionally essential. What that means is that these amino acids, even though we can make them, it's a really good idea to get them through the diet when you're in times of extreme growth or stress. An example of stress would be if you're very sick, an example of growth would be puberty. So if, for example, if you're going through puberty, these ones such as arginine, uh, cysteine, glutamine, glycine, proline, selenocysteine, taurine, ty tyrosine, you might want to get extra ones of those when you're growing, which probably translates to people going through puberty, especially boys, eating a ton of food and eating their parents out of house and home. Um, so you need extra amino acids, particularly when you're growing like that in puberty. And so these ones with two stars have sort of been arbitrarily defined as, as being ones you need more of in times of stress of any kind. Okay, now this hopefully gives you a, an overview of essential versus non-essential. The essential ones, remember, we can't make. Those are going to be made in other organisms such as uh, bacteria and plants. Okay, we're going to talk first about all the non-essential ones, um, except for tyrosine. Remember, I think that belongs over on the right, or excuse me, on the left side in essential. And then in another playlist, we're actually going to talk about essential amino acids. Okay, I've divided these up into two separate playlists because I think it works better that way. Um, hopefully, it gives you an idea of uh, the differences between them. All right, so in the next video, we're going to jump right into non-essential amino acid synthesis, particularly glutamate and glutamine. Join us in the next video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.